Well, here we are in a new year, and we're going to do a tour video today. I'm going to show you a lot of new things I've got going on. New fish, new plants, some new tanks that I've got set up, and I've got big new plans for this year that I'm going to be sharing with you as we go along. So let's get started here in the greenhouse. But before we get started, I've got to say thank you to my lovely wife, Angela, who made a guest appearance in last week's video adding a bit of very needed comic relief. Sometimes we just need to laugh about things in this hobby. And I know a lot of you enjoyed seeing her. Hopefully in the future she can have some more guest appearances. Anyway, let's get started with our tour. Well, the first thing that I want to show you and talk about is this new heater that I've got for this stock tank pond. This is my first year actually heating this pond through the winter and I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. I'll show you some of the results that I've been getting, but let me show you this, this heater. It's a Hyger 500 watt titanium steel aquarium heater with digital controls. But there's no glass, it's metal encased, and it's really a perfect size for this pond. And it's even got an alarm, as you can see, that goes off when the heater is out of water. And it will it'll have a shut off, it'll stop working until the heater goes back into the water and it's also got a digital display outside of the tank where you can control the temperature and set the thermostat on it and i've got it set for 72 and it really stays very close to that when it's running it never it really goes below 71 that i've seen and so it's really working out really working out well and the water uh, is consistently warm throughout the tank. There's no circulation in this pond, but the water is consistently warm throughout. I'm sure at the bottom there's some pockets, but as you can see, the, the uh, guppies are just very active. And of course, I've got the three goldfish in here, which they don't really need the heat. But the main reason why I added the heater was for the plants. In the past two winters that these plants have been growing in here, they have really, I've seen them suffer at the end of winter. They look really peaked and, and just not as healthy. And it takes them most of the growing season to kind of catch back up. And so this year I realized I really need to heat this pond for the sake of these plants because all of these are tropical plants that really need uh, the warmer temperatures. But since adding this heater, this Monstera has put on a brand new leaf and it did not grow any leaves at all through 2023 until I added this heater, so about two months ago. And it's, you know, it's very healthy, it's dark green, and I've noticed that it, the Monstera has also been putting on some new roots. You can kind of see below the water surface here, there's a lot of new roots coming out. So that's, that's really encouraging to see. And the peace lilies have put on some new leaves here in the back. Uh, the uh, money tree has just jumped. It's gone. It's gotten a lot taller. But the peace lily here in the front has put on new growth. The syngonium's just going nuts. So adding this heater was definitely a good idea. The new growth coming out on the, the golden goddess philodendron. And of course, the pothos there in the back with the, with the huge leaves. It's really loving the warmer temperatures. even have a fiddle leaf fig that I'm transitioning right now. It's working out pretty well so far. I haven't lost any leaves. It hasn't even shown any signs of shock or anything. I'm really impressed. This is my first time trying out a fiddle leaf fig uh, growing hydroponically. You can see I brought a lot of my uh, plants from outdoors in here that I wanted to protect. I've got this Brazilian penny wart that has just really gone nuts in this container. This is just planted in, in soil and I've got the Black Magic Elephant Ear, which didn't really do too well this year. It outgrew the previous pot that it was in and just still hasn't recovered. And of course, it got hit by the frost a few times, light frost. But these cannas are still going strong. Now these cannas, I'm gonna divide them up. I'm gonna plant some in the water and we're gonna see how that goes. The Bengal Tiger canna is uh, does do very well in the water from what I've read, from what I've seen, just never tried it for myself. So at the back of the greenhouse here, I've got this 40 gallon tank that I've got set up. This was a free tank that somebody was trying to just get rid of 
and so I lucked out on that. It's just a 40 uh, tall, I guess you'd say. Just It's got like the standard 12 or 13 inch width. But I'm growing out some Italian Val, and it was over in the 29 gallon, and it really wasn't doing very well. There's a, there was a few sprigs that were still left in there, but there's just not enough room for the Italian Val. It's just so crowded in there with all the plants. So I wanted it to have its own tank because it really needs so much more room. And so far it's really taken off. I mean, when I first planted it, it was barely a few inches tall. And that was, you know, a few months ago. So now it's really taken off despite the cooler temperatures. This tank is not heated, it's just heated by the, the air temperature in the greenhouse. So I've got some, right now I've just got some guppies in here just to get the cycle and going and uh, got some ram's horn snails but substrate is just uh, kind of a standard mixture that I've used in some of these other tanks it's a mixture of aqua soil and gravel kitty litter fluorite and I've actually got a plenum in here an under gravel filter you know kind of modified to a plenum but I haven't been running the air through it um, once we get into the warmer weather I'll start running the air through it I really need to be conservative with the power because I'm running a heater. And this is a new heater that I've got. Uh, before I was using a space heater that just sat on the floor which heated the air. This is actually an infrared heater. It's got a coil that goes through the middle and really sends out that radiating heat. And when you come through the door when the heater's going, you can instantly feel it. And it's really working out pretty well. The only downside is it, it, the way that it's directed, it's not really heating up anything in particular, just the plants. And I feel like these would work better if they have a heat battery of some kind. So even if I suspended this from the ceiling and pointed it at the ground, it would heat up the rocks. I've got several inches of you know gravel here. It could heat up. Or if I directed it toward this row of tanks, it could actually heat up the water in the tank. I don't think it would get too hot but um, I think that would work more efficiently. But something that's worth mentioning is since adding this heater, I've noticed that the air in the greenhouse is not nearly as humid. Obviously there's still some humidity because moisture is evaporating uh, out of these tanks, especially that uh, stock tank pond. But, um, and I've, you know, if you run your fingers along the, the roof of the greenhouse, you can definitely feel the water and there's always some amount of moisture dripping. But um, just walking in here, it doesn't feel nearly as humid. So I think that's one big difference between heating up the air, like what, what the space heater was doing down here, uh, versus using infrared heat. And of course, I do have this box fan that's suspended from the ceiling that's going to be circulating the air. I have it turned off right now for video, but this is constantly running 24-7. And so it, it is keeping the corners of the greenhouse reasonably circulated, although I don't know how any air can, <laughs> can get back in this corner with all these plants being as dense as they are. But thankfully, many of these plants uh, can, can handle moist uh, conditions like that. So in the pond basket, I'm actually growing out some Bacopa caroliniana. And I'm growing in, in this basket because my plan is, if I can get it started in here, I'm going to transition it outdoors to uh, an outdoor pond. And um, I've also got some giant hair grass in the back, still in the pot that it came in, but it's already so tall. I mean, it came very big, but it, it's really grown several inches since it's just been sitting in this in this tank. But I'm also going to pot some of this hair grass up into a basket like this, I'm thinking, and try growing it immersed. I'm, I'm also growing, going to grow the Bacopa immersed above the water out in the pond. So that's, that's going to be a new experiment, trying to grow some aquarium plants uh, outdoors in more of a pond setting. So now the heater just turned on and I can really feel that heat. I'm not, I'm not too close to it, but I'm not very far away either. It's really a good heater and it's got a remote control where you can adjust the temperature I've actually got it set it's got a thermostat built in and uh, right now it's set on 65 and the current temperature in the room is 63 so therefore the heater's cutting on and I can just leave it on that setting 
and it will automatically turn off when it gets to 65. So I'm really happy with that feature. I didn't have that with the little floor heater uh, that I was using earlier. And that was a big concern. I had to come out here and actually turn the heater off myself, and that was really a pain. So I think this is going to be a game changer. So in the 55-gallon guppy tank, which is not heated, uh, so the guppies are pretty sluggish, and um, the water wisteria has kind of declined a bit, just I really think because of the water temperature, because in the springtime, in the summer, this stuff just goes nuts, but it, it does not like the cooler temperatures. So every year, every winter, it, it, it declines like this, but there's always enough in the spring for, for me to get it going again. But uh, I would like to keep this tank a bit warmer. So I think uh, it would be worth it trying to reconfigure this, uh, this infrared heater so that it's aimed more at the tanks. Uh, but as you can see, the guppy grass is just going nuts. I've thinned it out probably half of it at a time, a few times now since I've set the tank up and it's really just, it doesn't mind cooler temperature at all. But the, I've got some ram's horn snails that are doing well in here. And I've got a layer of algae in the bottom. And you know, the, uh, the snails are going crazy, feeding on the detritus, you know, working through the algae. And um, of course, a lot of people don't like algae in their tank, but you know, it's really a good thing for a, a ecosystem tank. Maybe not to this extent if you're going to have it in the house as a display tank, but I really don't mind it. I like it to replicate a pond environment, which is what I'm trying to do. Really, the, the point of me setting up this tank was to replicate the, the conditions of this stock tank pond, but just in a, in a format that I can actually look into. Riparian plants are doing pretty well. I've got a few leaves on the Monstera that I'm going to have to cut off. They've got either a fungus going on or something. I really need to remove those. But, but the, uh, the new leaves are still looking good. We've got two big new leaves that came out since I uh, planted it in this tank. The uh, hemographis is doing awesome. And this, this piece kind of fell over and sprouted new roots uh, where it's touching the water. And, of course, this hemographis over in the corner, you can't really see it, but it's going crazy. It's getting plenty of sunlight. And this is a, a south facing side of the greenhouse and so lots of sunlight comes through. So it's really helping it out. But the syngonium cuttings are starting to take off. We've got some uh, Tradescantia and uh, Neon Pothos and the, uh, and the red mangroves are doing well. They're kind of slowing down because of the cooler water. But I don't know if you can see the roots, but they've got some, no, you can't see the roots. They've got some long roots coming down about halfway so far. So I'm hoping uh, through this summer they'll actually reach the, the substrate of the tank because I really want them to grow all throughout the substrate. But got some uh, air plants that I scored at my local greenhouse. They were actually throwing a bunch of older air plants away. So they, they don't look the best, but... Uh, and some of them have uh, have died. I think this one's dead, but I've been spraying them with water every, you know, several days or so, and some of them are starting to recover. Down here, I've got another pond plant. This is uh, Bull's Golden Sedge, and uh, it's going to be used in a pond outside. Got some salvinia. I ordered some salvinia from uh, aquariumplants.com. I ordered just a four-ounce cup. They ended up sending me a quarter pound of the stuff. So I've got it uh, set up in here, and I've got a little bit set up in this other tub, trying to get it acclimated, but it's doing well. I can see some new growth coming out, uh, some new leaves coming out there. The first few days, I did have to take out some dead pieces that had accumulated. But over here, I've got a cement mixing tub that... You just pick up at local uh, hardware store it's about six inches tall and i don't remember the exact dimensions about maybe 20 inches wide but it can perfectly fit six of these 10 inch pond baskets in inside and so i'm going to show you what i've got going what, I, what i've got planned outside of the greenhouse 
So I'm, I've just got some pond media in these baskets of different kinds that I'm trying to let the bacteria build up in. And um, this umbrella sedge, trying to get it rooted. And I've got a few in this tub. Also got a few in the heated stock tank pond. I think these are actually gonna do much better. So down in this tub, as, a, as I showed you, had a little bit of the Salvinia minima. Also got some uh, variegated water onion that I just recently potted up. It was a rescue plant, again, from a local garden center and some more umbrella sedge I'm trying to get rooted. And some new fish that I got recently, about a month or so ago, are some blue rice fish. Been wanting rice fish for a while, and for some reason it just took me a while to get around to actually doing it. But I've got 10 of these blue rice fish, and they are beautiful. They're the Mayuki Blue Madaka rice fish, and I've, I've got them, I bought them from LRB Aquatics. So thank you very much, Lucas, for sending me these. And uh, they've, they've been in perfect health since they came in, and they are in this as a quarantine tank. And I'm going to be moving them to a separate tank inside that I'll show you in a little while. But I've even got more plans than that for these rice fish. And I'm going to share those plants with you once we get outside but the plants i've got growing here of course guppy grass in the back corner i've got a big clump of java moss that's doing well and some rotala that i'm really wanting to um, i'm cutting it and rooting it every time it gets to the surface so i'm really eventually wanting this tank to be mostly filled with the rotala in this tank also from lrb aquatics i've ordered some of the coral blue platys, and there's a few guppies in there too, but there's, uh, I think I've got six coral blue platys, and they're still juvenile, but I'm also gonna be transferring them once they are quarantined. These were just in excellent condition, packaged well, so Lucas, you definitely know what you were doing. I appreciate that. Over here we've got bumblebee platys, which are all hiding now. There's a few small ones you can see. But the java moss is so thick in this tank. I'm going to have to thin it out at some point. Um, and I've got some guppy grass growing. The guppy, this guppy grass has got algae growing all in it, so I'm going to thin that out. The riparian plants that I have in here, the ribbon bush has gotten so tall. It's almost up to the ceiling of the greenhouse. I really need to attach it back to some of that driftwood back there. But I've also got the um, ginseng ficus transitioned and it's been putting out new leaves so i'm really excited to see how well that does through the growing season I actually started feeding the goldfish a more substantial food got the fluval bug bites goldfish formula so these are larger pellets and since the goldfish are now growing larger by the day having something more substantial to feed them has definitely been helpful and I do feed them, this frog bit that's in there is actually for them to eat, and there's a little bit of duckweed left. Anytime I have excess floating plants in other tanks, I just throw them in here, let the goldfish eat them. So I got a ton of marimo moss just in this jug right here. Uh, this whole thing's full of it. So I've got some experiments with that, and I'm doing, trying to get it growing on some rocks. And I've just got this super glued onto the rocks. And I think I've seen that done in other videos, but I've never actually tried it myself. So I've got another rock down there. I'm hoping that'll work. Yeah, but these jungles in a box, all these house plants packed into these storage totes. This is one of the 27 gallon storage totes. So this, they're just crammed in here. Got, got a good potting soil. So I really need to go through and probably take some cuttings on some of these plants get them going but really excited about this this uh, variety of pothos this pearl and jade pothos it's done extremely well since I planted it in here crammed it in here with all these other other house plants so I need to take some cuttings of that as well because it's really grown out pretty long so that's cool to see but a lot of these other uh, taller plants are just moved in here for the winter. This Dracaena. Of course, these cannas that I mentioned earlier, they're just in here for the winter. I really could leave them outside. They would probably overwinter just fine in here. But since I'm going to be dividing these up, 
uh, to try to get them started as pond plants. I wanted to hopefully get a head start. So hopefully late February, I can get them started uh, in some of these baskets over here. That way when springtime actually does come, they'll have a, a head start. But this variegated ginger in the back is doing very well. It's doing exactly what I was hoping it would. It's getting tall and kind of creating uh, part of the background. I've got this one shoot that's really coming out strong over the pond and it's just hard to beat that variegated leaf pattern and that color too it's just a, a, a yellow green with the dark green stripes i just love that spider plants going nuts with all these little plantlets hanging down i could probably start propagating some of those too pretty soon this actually needs to be bumped up into a bigger pot i mean the spider plants do like some constriction around the roots but it does get to a point where they just need a bigger pot and here I've got some cuttings of the Baltic Blue Pothos. It's the variety that has the split leaves on one side, similar to Monstera. I've got a larger uh, basket of it over there, which is where these cuttings came from. Of course, a few cuttings of the inch plant or the Tradescantia. Now let's look at some things going on outside of the greenhouse. So this, this raised bed planter over the past few years, I've been growing plants out of it. Uh, you can see some of my earlier tour videos. Well, I decided that I want to convert this into a little pond setup. So, I uh, and so it turns out that these these 27 gallon storage totes, three of them fit perfectly inside this box. I mean, I could not have planned this any better. And so I've got them filled up now. I'm trying to let them settle and make sure that they stay reasonably level because in the bottom half of this box, it's just packed soil. And um, so far, it's been a few days, but so far it's, it's holding up pretty well. I think it's gonna remain level. So my plan for, for this setup is I'm gonna use it for breeding fish this spring, uh, namely the blue rice fish. So I'm going to do the musical tank uh, scenario, similar to you know what Lucas Bretz uh, has done in his videos. I'm just going to try that out. Just going to keep them in here for a while, and uh, and then switch them over, and then another few weeks and switch them over to the, the third tank, and uh, see how that goes. See if I can get any fry out of it, because I would love to get a nice collection of those blue rice fish, because. I'm going to be setting up some container ponds in this area of my backyard. I'm going to be setting up a, a variety of container ponds. And uh, that's one of my big plans for this spring uh, is to, to set these ponds up, of course, make videos on them. But I'm also going to be growing out a number of pond plants. And I showed you the mixing tubs inside. Well, I've got actually got four of them that I'm going to be lining up along this uh, this cross tie and four of them will fit perfectly along here and in each one I'm going to have six of those large pond baskets and in those baskets I plan to be growing pickerel weed, red star hibiscus and white star hibiscus, some aquatic irises, Japanese sweet flag, Mexican petunia, equisetum and floating plants like Amazon frogbit, Salvinia minima, and hopefully some other pond plants that also grow well in aquariums. So if you are in the central Mississippi Jackson metro area, be on the lookout for these plants for sale this summer. I'll be listing them on Facebook Marketplace. Be sure to follow Plant Life Project's Facebook page where I will be giving availability updates on these plants if you are outside of this area, we can definitely arrange for shipment for some of these plants. And I will also be giving availability updates on the YouTube community tab. And the tubs that I'm going to be, going to be breeding fish in, they're also going to have pond plants, but I'm also going to be trying to grow out aquarium plants in here while I'm breeding the fish. And I've got the, uh, the four inch wide uh, baskets that I'm going to be growing smaller pond plants in for the smaller container ponds. So there's a lot of new material that's going to be coming out uh, with these new projects.